Then we get another set of information, and now we're starting to get to more deeper things. We start getting to moral truths. Now, moral truths are what I would, I would call information that starts to affect the soul now. So before we've covered the physical truths and the spiritual truths, and they affect the physical, really, but the moral truths start affecting the soul. And what do I mean by moral truths? Well, here's a moral truth. If you murder, you are out of harmony with love. That's a moral truth. And if you're even more developed, you will receive this message about murder. If you even think of murdering, you are already a murderer. That's a moral truth too. And that's why in the first century I said that a man looking at a woman so as to have sex with her has already committed adultery in his heart. Right? So these are moral truths. Now, obviously, if I'm okay with adultery, I'm not going to receive a moral truth about adultery, am I? If I'm okay with murder, I'm not going to receive a moral truth about murder. There are many people on earth as mediums who justify murder as, you know, the, the conflict between good and bad, the yin and yang concept, right? And so they go down the track of saying there's no bad and there's no good. There's no, in other words, there is no morals. And those mediums can't receive information about morals as a result. And yet there are many, many spirits in the spirit world who want to transmit information about morals because their morality when they're on earth has deeply affected their condition where they are now and what's happening to them right now and how much pain they're in right now. Does that make sense? Can you give an example of that? Um, in what way? How their morality all right, yeah, certainly. And there's a pageant message that's worth reading. It's about a man who's in the 1800s, and I think I might have mentioned him before. A man who, when he was on Earth, he used to collect rabbits from the wild for scientific experiments. So he'd collect all of these rabbits, he'd get them alive, and he'd take them in to scientists, and they'd cut them up alive most of the time an experiment on them, you know, looking at organs and looking at all those kind of things for the progress of humanity, if we can call it that, right? And then some of those rabbits also got used in experiments with regard to things like perfumes and so, and so forth, right? Now, when he passed, at the time before he passed, he felt that was fine. He felt there was nothing wrong with that. But when he passed, the law kicked in where he became very, very conscious of the law of compensation about the fact that he had caused the destruction of many, many animals and caused a lot of pain in the process, both in the animals and in the people who were giving, giving the animals to. And so this moral law kicked in. The law of compensation exposed it to him and he came to James Paget wanting to know how to get out of it, like how to progress, because he felt really bad, his, his conscience which is the disparity between the truth and our own actions kicked in. And when that kicks in, it starts kicking us, generally. And so that's what started to happen for him. Now, he was not aware of that moral law before he passed. But he also would have been very, very happy to let lots of people on Earth know to be aware of that moral law. Does that make sense? Because it would prevent all of their pain when they passed. And it will prevent a lot of pain happening on the earth as well. Does that make sense? Yeah. Jen? Just okay, so... If you, if you do the mic. This is a very strong influence. His name is Norman. He wrote his story down. He then interacted with Joseph Smith and started the Mormon Church. Yep. And his grief... Yeah. Many, many hundreds of thousands of spirits are trapped between first and sixth sphere and can't, and can't move forward and his sense of 
because he has a huge amount of grief because of his teachings being responsible for their condition. Promoting that, he as believes. He and he, he come, comes to me in begging for Yeah, there's a lot of grief in him. He, he, he wants, what he wants is a medium who's able to channel um, what he now knows. What, the difference between between what he channeled to Joseph Smith and what he now knows, and that's what he would like to do, and and this is part of the problem is when we start teaching things on earth, and and most of the teachings on earth come from spirits, you see, so so Joseph Smith is said to be the founder of the Mormon Church, but in reality, it's a spirit who's the founder of the Mormon Church who channeled this material to Joseph Smith. Does that make sense? And so that spirit bears the primary responsibility for the creation of any falsehood that Joseph Smith channeled. Would Joseph Smith be aware that he was spirit influence? Uh, certainly, was, yes. He was. Yeah. 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 yeah, and he has the same grief. Uh, yeah, because he, he now sees the things that he was doing on earth as well. And so it's very important for these spirits to to start learning about the ways to progress in the spirit world. The focus of this discussion though is more about how we can assist them and what's going on with our other soil condition. So I would like to have another discussion where we're really focused on the spirits themselves and helping their spirits. And in fact, that it was some, what, some of the things we'll be doing in these sessions that we plan for the future is actually sitting down and actually helping these spirits uh, through their emotions so that they can work through their emotions about how their, their condition. And so I know that that's a bit frustrating for both those spirits, but um, if we can have this focus, because what we need to do is get lots of mediums first on earth who can help them. And uh, once we've got that, then obviously these spirits will get lots of help. Now, does that make sense though? What, what happened uh, with regard to many of these channelings that came through? is that they have affected hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on earth. And therefore, every single one of those people who pass, pass with a belief system that is either harmonious with love or disharmonious with love. Now, many of the belief systems are mostly harmonious with natural love, but very few are harmonious with divine love. And so once these spirits learn about the divine love path, which many of these spirits have, they still have huge amounts of grief to work through and allow themselves to work through about the actual process that they were involved in influencing so much pain on the earth. And that's the thing that we need to bear in mind is that even from a moral perspective, teaching the truth has its benefits, but teaching falsehood has huge repercussions, not just for the medium or the spirit, but also for the people that are influenced by their teachings. So it's a huge repercussion. Now again, we can get out of any of these conditions and we can progress from any of these spaces. So all the spirits who are concerned about that need to realise that we're, we can get out of these conditions and progress from those spaces by just a willingness to experience the emotion of it all. Just the same as here on earth. Does everyone understand how morals are a bit more important? Can you see how it's a bit more important to start channeling the truth about morality? Because it has a huge effect, not just now, but also in your life in the spirit world. It will actually, you, your morals will determine whether you arrive in the first sphere or in the second or third or fourth spheres in the spirit world. Um, you're just, just your morals will determine that. Okay, so there's morality. That's the next highest level of truth. That is one type of truth that the earth badly needs to hear and still has a lot of trouble with on the earth. 